Why is to remind you tomorrow is Friday. You have to do it tomorrow. Ah, no, no. It's not like that. It's not like that. You need to come for a class to me, for me to explain for how to you how to do it. <laughs> it's okay. So let me just. Basically, uh, I would there's no problem again. Hello, guys. Hello, Hi, sir. We can hear yeah, you. Thank you. Well, which is so it? we have a chat suggestion that it's about, you know, what we have here, we can see over here. Although I'm going to send something much better than this to you. What I want, I'm going to send to you is not, um, it's can fitting into a slide, but I'm going to show you now. I didn't prepare it though. It's, it's uh, other guys prepared it, but it's something very useful. So when you have two variables, Let's assume you have um, um, GDP. You know, it's a variable. It's a quantitative. It's a continuous value, like it's a value, not a category. Then you have um, standard of living, or what can I call it? The age people are dying, or things like that. Two values, basically. You want to compare them together. You use a scatter chart. If it is more than two variables, you can use a theory, a, a bubble chart. When you want to do something about about um, time, anything related to time, the golden rule, it cannot change. You can see over time, you use a line chart. You understand all multiple line charts. When you have a category against another category, you use what? You can use a bar chart. You can use a, a tree map. You can use a column chart. And we have a lot of other ones like that. What I want to show you is this. I'm going to send is a PDF. Can you guys see? Guys, look up. Can we see this? People are not responding to me. Are we fighting? Visuals reference. Yes. So this, reference. so this visual reference, what it tells you is that when you want to make a comparison, it's very, the most important thing is this you need to first of all understand is this. If you look, you need to check the legend. There's a legend there. You can see this legend. Then we also have another one over here that says recommended. There is a better alternative. Don't use in the category. So let me just show you one for this comparison now. I believe you can see my screen more clearly now. Yes, sir. Right. Yeah. For this comparison now, can you see now that it has a background of something like, um, what's this color now? I'm not good with colors. Though. Is it ash or something? This one, two, three, four. So it is recommended. If you come down, it is recommended. You should use it. But the one that has a, a background of white, it is telling you that don't ever use it when you want to make a comparison. Can you, do you understand what I'm saying now? Oh, okay. So don't use it. Then we have another one that has like, um, what's this color now? This color. Cream. This one, the background like orange or something, I don't know. So if you, if you, scroll, yeah, if you scroll down, you can see it is a better alternative. But remember you already have four choices already. One, two, three, four that you can use to make comparisons. So why should you go for the, all these ones? But there are alternatives you can what? You can consider. So when you want to represent something over time, can you see the first three guys they wrote? Line chart, spark line, and card with state. So these three guys are the only ones you should use for line charts. All these other ones, don't ever use them. You understand? 
Do you get what, I'm try what it is trying to tell you now? Can you now interpret it very well? These ones, you can use it. Then we have ranking and things like that. So I'm going to send this PDF to you. It is, you can always use it as a reference, but eventually you are going to get better in doing it. It's just practice and you two, you ask yourself questions. So Mudukwe, good evening. Mr. Jimo, good evening. No. Silifa, good evening. Mr. Jimo, please, can you do me a favor? I lost, my phone. I lost my phone for the last one week and I just got one today. So I don't know. I, I know I've missed a lot. If, um, the last update I have on my WhatsApp is for 17th of October. So... I don't know if um, you can assist me with all the recordings I've missed up till this. No problem. I will send it. I will send it this mm -hmm. evening. Yeah. Right. Sorry Thank about you. that. I, yeah. I hope everything is fine. Yes, yes. It's good. Yeah. Thank you. Titi how are you? I'm fine. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for joining us. Um, Silifatu, hello. Good evening, Mr. Juma. Yeah, good evening. So, so you guys get this. This is a PDF. I'm going to send it to you. It is made by SQLBI, SQL.bi. If you go to this website, actually, SQL.bi, I'm digressing, but it is a good digression. Huh? SQL. I said I'm digressing, but it's a good digression. And I wanted to ask a question. Please, quickly ask. The, 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 the graph I'm seeing, the types, there are plenty. Of, are you sure our Excel have all this thing or Power BI? Or Power, we can download don't worry, we are going, we are going to there. Power BI oh. doesn't have everything. We have um oh. we have um built-in visual. Can you see built-in visual over here? So anyone that you see this um icon yellow, let us just come up again. Can you see change over time? Can you see now that it has yellow icon? And this one has blue icon. So yellow icon means that um, it is built in by default in Power BI. This blue icon, it means it is not built in. I'm going to show you where to get it. Do you understand? Okay, sir, yes. You can see this one too. Okay. It has yellow icon, it is inbuilt. This one is not inbuilt. But these are like more than a lot of charts that are currently available in Power BI that you can use. Excel doesn't have all of them, but it has a good number of them. And a, a number of times there are ways you can manipulate Excel to give you another type of chart, but you have to be a chart guru to do that. You understand what I'm trying to say? So SQLBI is owned by two guys. Huh? What's happening? It's owned by two guys. These guys are, I think, Italians, um, Marco Russo and Abato something. So, what they do is these guys are like the best guys. They, yeah, these guys, you can subscribe to their newsletter. They have courses, some are paid, some are not paid. That um, you can see this in the name, Marco Russo and Abato Ferrari. You can follow them on Twitter and um, what's it called? LinkedIn. So they are actually the guys that are very good in DAX. They understand the in and out of DAX. I mean, they are like, what do I doctor is in DAX? You understand? So they are the one that re released them this one for public to use. You can see. So, and that is what I'm sharing with you guys. It is actually free on their websites. It's hidden somewhere here. You understand? So they have a lot of articles. There are books, there are videos. You can check. So that is that about that. Let me just quickly go back over here. So we can use it as a reference, but there are some fundamental rules which I have already discussed. Let me... So now, constructing effective pie charts. Pie charts are good and they are not good. In fact, this particular um, something is not, is not even a good example. This example that I have over here, to be frank, 
But people say that you can use pie charts, that when you have five or four categories, you can use pie chart. But to me, I only use pie charts when I have two or three categories, male and female. You understand? Black and white. Those are the categories. So, because it's very difficult. I see now that this one is very difficult to read. So, just, I think it's best we avoid using pie charts. A lot of times when you use pie charts, a bar chart can represent that information. You understand? So that is just the simple thing about pie charts. If you have not, if I have not mentioned it, or you are not in my class in the Excel when I was discussing about pie charts, you can go and watch that particular video again. But I think I discussed it a lot there. So again, we have a table. It's not about color. You can see now, this guy is able to show our, this guy, it was able to show our information, the data, in a very simple format. It's not until you use one very funny color that you are presented information. Sometimes all you just need to do is a very simple black and white, that's enough. So you should always use the right font size, use white space, highlight items using symbols. So what we mean by highlight items, I'm going to show you. Can you see that this guy that is negative, it has an arrow pointing down. Hello, somebody? Yes. Thank yes. you. Yes. Yes. How about you? So it has an arrow pointing down. So you can always use it so that it can quickly call attention. And you should also reduce precision. I forgot to mention. Um, basically, I, I don't expect anybody to do a chat and it should be, it should, it should just stay, if you have percentages, it's good you don't let it be less than, it's good you don't let it to be less than two decimal places or more than two decimal places. Generally, the standard is two decimal places. Do you understand, guys? I'm sorry, I have some, yeah. I have some background noise. So don't let it be less than two decimal place more, or more than two decimal place. So two decimal place is okay. Yes, yes. So, so again, you should focus on your what? On users. When you, the users, for example, when you want to present to CEOs, president, directors, what they are concerned with is different from what managers are concerned with. And it's different from what analysts are concerned with. And it's even from what clients are concerned with. Do you understand? For example, in the secondary school, you have report card. The report card of everybody, of, um, of a particular student. The student wants to see what each subject, what did I get in that? What is my score in each of the subjects, right? Hello? You can hear you, sir. Yeah, but yes, but this the principal of the school is the principal interested in what Afis Jima got in mathematics. No, he just wants to see that what is the percentage of people that pass. He wants to be able to evaluate the teachers. Are they teaching well? You understand what I'm saying? So those are the kind of you can see now. If you now want to present a school report, like at the end of the year, to a principal. What I'm going to be showing the principal is going to be different from what I'm going to be showing you. Um, what's it called? A student. So when Mike also releases results, what happens? They show your results, uh, mass, A1, English, D2. And for every individual like that. But at the end, at the end of the day, at the school level, what the school is interested in is, is not even the number of A1s. They want to know how many percentage of the students do we have that got above C. You understand? Do we have 100% pass rates at the school level? So you can see now, depending on the individual that wants to see the, the what's it called? The result, your visual, your report, that is what is going to determine what you are going to show them. So we must always factor in our users when we, when we, when we, what's it called? When we present. So like, again, I think we've mentioned this again, seven good, seven rules, of, I mean, 
at the beginning, effective data visualization, it must be, have a clear purpose, right people, right time, things like this. We've mentioned it already. We've mentioned this already. So we have what we call report and dashboard. I'm going to discuss that later in, in our Power in our um in Power BI. We are going to start Power BI work now. What I want to quickly show us now is guys, this is an a task for us. Everybody has to do it. I want to see your comments in the chat. Are we ready? Are we good to go? Yes, I'm good to go. Yes. So we have a, we have this simple table. We, I'm going to show some other charts to all now. The question now is you should pick the right charts to represent this table. You understand? You can pick more than one, or maybe you should just delete. But let's see. So this is one chart. Is a KPI is a KPI chart. Ask yourself some questions. Is it the right visual? The use of colors, the use of spacing, white spacing, alignments. Ask yourself. Then I have other ones. I have the line chart. I have a column chart with a line chart. This line chart is showing budgets. The columns are showing what? The actual. Then I also have a stacked column chart. I have a stacked back chart. Then I have something like, um, what do I call this now? It's like a bar chart with um, an indicator for your budget. Then they are similar. So maybe we should just start from deleting. Which one is not an effective visual first? Let us ask that question, guys. Out of all these charts, which one is not an effective visual? Which one is the wrong chart to represent this information? Line chart. Are you sure? What is wrong with line charts over here? This one, is it the start line chart? Are you, talking, are you talking about this one? Yes. Why is it wrong, Sandra? Um, it doesn't show data over time or something. I do understand. What is the meaning of something? Mm, I think I'm, I'm following this um, option that she chose. But the reason why I'm saying it's not the correct one is because you cannot really, the visual is not really, the difference is not really showing. Like, yeah, so you can see that the lines are separate, but it will take a while before it sinks in that, oh, this one is different from this one or something like that. Okay. You have all tried. You are correct anyway. The line chart is not good. And the basic reason the line chart is not good is, assuming this is London, South and West, if they are 2010, 2011, 2012, 2013, then a line chart will have been the correct chart out of everything. All the others will be wrong. Is that okay, guys? But in this particular case, what we are putting on the x-axis is not a time. It's not related to data at all. So why are we using a line chart? Remember, let us just quickly, oh, I think I should just, sorry. Let me just, um, Remember this chart now? We have change over time. Can you see? That is when we use a what? A line chart. But when we want to make um, comparisons, can you see now? We can use a clustered bar chart or a what? A clustered line chart. We can also use a bullet chart. So we can see now that one, two, three. Anywhere we see it in our chart, it is correct. It is good to use. Is that okay? Yes, sir. Uh, so, um, where is my where is my presentation? So now, which means that in that case, we can say that this guy, 
the reason line chart may not be best here again is very simple. It's not bad, but we have a line chart. It's a line. This is a line and column chart used together. But we don't have anything about trend here. Again, we should really ask ourselves, why is line chart not good? Let me tell you. This particular point now, let's assume I'm, I'm over here. This part, if I trace it, what does it represent? This, this particular place. Does it represent anything? Which category and which value does it represent? Do we have an answer to that? No. We no, cannot say no. we cannot say it is it's it, doesn't only, belong to it doesn't belong no. to anywhere, no. but we have a yeah, data point for it. But when you have a line chart that is a time. You know, time is, is moving forward, like January, February, March, or today's date, next date. You know that it actually corresponds to something. Do you get why the line chart is? But in the column chart, you already know that this point, though, this, this space between, you know, is, is, is a gap. It doesn't represent any information, which is clear. You understand? So that is just the fundamental rule. So a bar chart is, and these guys are good. These guys are good. These guys are good. But what is wrong with it is that it is too cluttered. Why is it too cluttered? Basically, I don't need this information. Can you see this data label? 1.44. I don't need it because I have my y-axis already. So you, just, you don't need to over-represent your information. You understand? A child is calling. Uh, is mom or her mom. Mommy, mommy, you are still asking, is the mother a female or a male? We don't need that again, you understand? That is excessive information. It is very clear already. We have 1.5 million here. Why do you need to also be putting, you are putting excessive information. So just, um, so you have to choose between y-axis label or data label. You understand? And that is what is wrong over here in these two guys. They are not exactly bad, but that is what is wrong. These guys are good. These guys are good. This guy is good. And if I want to use it, the only reason, you can see it's taking a lot of space. So you have to use it wisely whenever you want to use. So if, if this budget, um, actual versus budget, is what is most important for you to show this guy, you want to call attention of, um, of your audience to a particular part of the graph. I think in that particular case, I'm going to use this KPI, this one, two, three, four, because no matter where it is on the page, the audience want to look at ah, what is happening here. Let me check. Is that not so? It calls attention in a way. So it's just an exercise for us. So, um you should use colors meaningfully so when you have a dashboard basically you should not be using more than two or three colors in the whole uh, of the dashboard please that kpi can you explain the how how to read it yeah i know it's kpi see. now we can see can now see that black line, this, that black actual, line. Yeah, this black line is showing the uh, and the, the budget mm -hmm. then it, the the place it sketches here is 1.4 the, where the blue line stops is the actual. Have I answered your question? Yes, sir. I just wanted to be very clear. Yeah, where Thank the you. blue line stops is the, but you can yeah. edit it in um, Power BI. I'm going to, I am, I may show you. You understand? Ah, you can see now. Sure, so no, worry. now, this, <laughs> I can't show you all visuals now. You can see, look at all, all visuals we have in Power BI. Is it possible to go through everything like this? It's not possible. Uh, it's not uh, possible. It's so not you, possible. Are the, you are the one that I have to explore. It's not possible. If we are picking it one by one, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot of time. So about color, choose color meaningfully. Don't just choose color. If you check this something now, it has red, it has green, it has blue, it has white, it has black. And if you check something I showed you over here in my presentation in my slide. Where is the slide? I think I showed you. Yeah, 
Yeah, I think it's about this. I'm trying to find it. It spans it, I think it's five or six. Yeah, something like this. You can see now just black and white. It passed the information. So that's what I'm trying to show you. So it's not until you use multiple colors. I'm not saying you can't use color, but you use color what? Meaningfully. You understand? So if you are using green and red somewhere, let that red convey another meaning. You understand? So the, the, what we always do is we use contrasting colors against each other. Contrasting colors against each other. So you can let us just go to Professor Google and just say, let me just show you contrasting colors. So when you use them on top of each other, it's always bring it, it always brings the color out. And even when I design my PowerPoint, that is what I do also. So For example, black and white are contrasting colors. You understand? Okay, I think this is it. Can you guys see now what we have over here? Can you see now that these guys are very difficult to read? The poor ones, because these colors are close to each other on the color wheel. Or oh, let me just use this one. Can you guys see now? We red and red now, you can see? So I always check every time. Once I see that I want to use green color, let's assume a client gives you work. The client works with GTB. GTB, their color is what? Is it not orange? Yes, orange. Yeah. So if you want to design something for them, you have to look at this line and only use something about all these good, good ones. You can see that for the orange, you can only use black, white, and yellow with it. Any other color will not be suitable. You understand what I'm trying to say? Am I communicating, guys? Yeah. So there is nothing wrong in always checking, always check, always check. You can see black and white is very good. White on blue too is also very good. I, I always like it too. I always use it. So let us just go back to where is the slide? So how are you comparing it? Is it the word written on it? Are you yes, now the color? They've, they've written it good. The good now is white color. Look white. at my mouse. Okay. okay. Yeah. White and red. Yeah. You can, see it, you can see it very clearly. But look at this one. Can you see what is written over here? <laughs> I can't see it. It's, it's, it's blank. Yeah, like... because they wrote red on <laughs> red. So also, orange on red is not good. They are very close to each other. They are not contrasting colors. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Yeah. This is another thing you can use. You can use something like this. Colors that are opposite each other. They go, I think, yeah. Um, Am I correct? Yes. They go well with each other. So once they are opposite, it's, it's, it shows well on each other. But the ones that are close, like red. Now, if you write orange on red, if you use orange as text on red, it will not show. Okay. You won't see it clearly. You understand? Okay. They are close to each other like this. So don't use them. Don't use these guys. But if they are opposite, they are still good. You understand? Yes, sir. So it's just a very, you can always check online. Um, ah, time is not on our side. 5.30. Okay, so now we want to go to our Power BI, um, what's it called now? Desktop. So you can see a lot of concepts I've mentioned, they are what? They are useful for us, whether we are working with um, Power BI or not. 
Is that okay, guys? Yes, sir. <clears throat> yeah. So in our last class, we created measures and we created time intelligence measures, right? Yes. Yes. So over here is where we have our visualization pane. And um, for me, for me, I think I added, um, what I'm going to do is, these are the visualization that are available in Power BI by default. You understand? But we can also get more visuals. What I did not mention, I forgot to send, I should send a video to us. I need to teach you guys how to open an account with Power BI. So because you have to open an account, for you to open an account, you can see now I have an account. That is the only reason you can add additional visuals. Can you see that as we have an ellipsis here? These three dots. If I click on it, I have get more visuals. So if I click on get more visuals, I can, you won't be able to do it if you don't have a sign in. Unless your organization have a sign in for you, Microsoft account. Maybe your workplace. But there is a way to go about it. I'm going to send the link to us after the class. Is that okay? Thank you. Yeah, there is a way to go about it. The, the, reason, the reason is that, um, okay, I'll come over there. So you can see now we are in the app store or like visual store, let me call it visual store. You can see now that we have a lot of visuals that are not available. Some of these visuals, can you see my screen guys? Yes. Yes, you can see we have a lot of them and we can group them by categories, KPI. You can see now we have several KPI visuals. So we have time, those ones that relate to time. You understand? And that is where the, the guy that designed this, this thing. All these things, they are in, some of them are custom visuals. So we call them custom visuals. Why are they custom? They are not designed by Microsoft. It is like what some developers design. They now put it on App Store for other people to be able to download and use. Do you understand? Okay. So now, what we want to do in the next, within the next hour, is that we want to create a simple dashboard for ourselves in this class. Are we good to go? Are we good to go, guys? Yes, sir. So yes, basically, sir. in what we want to do, we are, I'm just going to, we are not going to repeat ourselves because of time. We are just going to basically make use of um, what we have over here. Yes, this guy. You understand? So we want to have what, where, how, and why. Is that okay? But our what? The only modification I'm going to do is that our own what is going to occupy the whole of the upper session like this. Do you understand what I'm saying? So we are going to have some cards over here. So like one, two, three, four, five. Remember we have written our measures already. So our measures, we want to use it to express ourselves now. Is that good? Are we okay? So where should we start from? We have a card visual. This card visual, once I click on it, can you see that I have a card over here? I can adjust the size. And I just want to put what? Sales on it. So it's telling me 73 billion. So you can just control C, control V. You 
you can basically adjust this 73 billion. So once you have your visual, you can format it. I come to format pane over here. Guys, look up, look up, look up. This icon. I come over here. And we have data label. Can you see now that in my data label, I have display unit. You can decide to change your display unit if you want. You can add a decimal place. If you want, you can change the test size. Um, I'm about not data label now. I want to show you, but in this case, it's okay at we don't need any decimal place. That's too much precision. Let's just come to category. So in our category now. Um, we have category and we have title. There's a difference between the two. Let me quickly show you. Can you see title now? If I own my title, I can type something. I can call it revenue. Can you see it is appearing over here now? But when I increase the size, can you see now that my category is somewhere hidden? If I off it, I won't see sales again. So the category is just showing the name of the measure. So I always don't like to see it. Let us just put what we like in our category. We own category. Oh, I, I said category, title, I'm sorry, title. We own our title. We just adjust it and we make it center the line. We can increase the test size. And um, we can reduce the size of this data label to 45 is too much somehow. Let us use 40 or uh, 36. So for this second guy, we are going to make sure that, can you see now that if I'm holding another visual, it is, there is a guideline that is showing to let me know if they are aligned to, with each other. So I can put a space and I don't want this guy again. What I need to do is to come over here. I remove sales. I don't want sales on it. I want to put something else entirely. Oh, we did not write the measure for it. I'm sorry, there is a measure we ought to have written. Let us quickly write it. We create a new measure. That measure is going to be transaction. We want to know the number of transactions. Oh, I did I delete it? I thought we wrote it. Let us just quickly do it. What do you think we are going to be able to, we are going to use to determine number of transactions? Do you guys understand what I'm saying? Transaction. We have a sales that has happened, but we want to know number of transactions. Anybody? Anybody? Can we use the number of the products? No, transactions so, is like you have a supermarket. You want to know the number of people that came into your store. Whether they buy one thing, they bought one thing, or they buy, they bought them um, 100 things. Each transaction recorded. I think that, I think that is counting. That is what? Are you okay? I said counting, maybe. Can't what? Okay, let's see can't. Can you see? Um, Power BI is showing me that I have several type of can't. Can't, can't A, can't ask, can't blank, can't rose. Which one do you think is going to be? Counter. Okay, let's check the definition of counter. It counts the numbers in a column. Is that correct? No. It may be correct, but it's not entirely correct. 
look at it like an ATM. In an ATM machine, whether you withdraw or you did not withdraw, once you go there and you press the button or you put your card inside, it is a transaction already. Is that correct? So the fact that I did not withdraw, you know, if it is counting numbers, it won't count. But I did not withdraw. Maybe I made a transfer, I blocked my account number, but it's a transaction. That's just a simple fact. So what do you think we are going to count? We count all. Is there anything I count all? No, we, these are the only types of counts we have. Count, counter, counters, count blank, count rows, count text. Distinct counts. Count. It should be distinct counts. Since we want to know the particular number of customers. No, I didn't say we want to know the number of customers. Transaction. We want to know the yes. transaction. If you uh, um, added Joker, you went to a store 10 times in a particular day to buy something. It's just no, one customer. Just counts. Count is going to count what? What is the definition of count? It's going to count the numbers in the column. We... Wow. The answer is here now. Me, I'm saying it. The answer is count rules. Count rules. We just want to count everything that has been recorded. You understand? Okay. As long as that thing is recorded, it is already a transaction. Once you put your ATM inside that machine, the ATM people, they already know you came there. Whether you withdrew, you did not withdraw, it doesn't concern them again. It is already a transaction. So we are going just to put our F order table. Or it is here is F order, sales table. And enter. So I have my transactions. I want to put it on that visual. So 31K, then we can, um, one thing we can do is we come over here again. We give it, we remove the category. We give it a title. And we call it what? We can call it a uh, transaction. So we already know that for these are our sales. And we can come to data label. I think we use size 36. It, everything has to be uniform. And you can give it, you can make it align to the middle, to the center. Is that okay, guys? Are we together? Yes. So you can also create, let's just, so that we don't have to stress ourselves too much. We can just copy a visual and uh, over here now we can, we can have um, sales here to date. We remove transaction first and we add sales YTD. 25 billion. Sir, uh, this, this tool you are using to create this box, what's the name of the tool, sir? We are under visualization pin. The name of the card is a card visual. Card visual. Okay. Yes. You card... took it from part of this yes, items. Here, this card yeah. icon here. Okay. Yes, yes. Card visual. Then we can have, um, we want to edit it. And we come to title again. We have revenue YTD. Let us just call it like that. And we can paste again. We can just put um, sales last year.
Oh, I need to remove transaction first, sorry. Then. Then we come over here. Yeah, it's showing us. Okay. So we come over here, title. We can call it since last year. I want to actually remove all other pages in my work. I don't need them. Remember, we only created all these other pages in our last class to see the visuals, the, the what's it called? The measures we are creating. They are not for any reporting purpose. If you are sure of yourself, you don't need to show it. Okay, so let us just we let us just stop here. That is about card visual. So we want to look at um answer the question about where. So remember, we have a colon called D region, right? So inside this D region, we to answer the question about where we can use a a what a bar chart you can see what i'm talking about alignment now can you see now that i'm trying to align it and i'm using my grid line also as a guide and i come to the region i come to region and i come to sales this is very similar to what we did in uh, excel Except that in the example, use fiber table. Uh, answer me now. Okay, so. We have it, but if I were you, what I would have done is this. Guys, look up. If I were you, can you see that the space this thing is occupying is too much? This label, look at the space. Which is that all these axes is occupying too much space. So what I have done, we can use Power Query to do it. When we come to our D region, I think you guys know how to do that already. Can you see now that for North Central, I have NC. I just use the initials. Is somebody to, with some, can you see NC, N E N W? As long as your audience understands it, you need to make sure your audience understands. If they do understand, Maybe you are going to have a place you are going to keep it that, okay, these numbers, they represent this thing. This abbreviation, it might be somewhere down. You understand what I'm saying? That's if your audience don't understand. So in that case, I'm just check and uncheck. Uncheck and check. So no, 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 this is not what I want. I want to put um, regions. So you can see it's better now. I'm able to see what is important for me to see. Is that okay, guys? Guys are not responding. Are we too tired today? Hello? Are we too tired? I'm trying to follow you. What? So I should just continue speaking, right? No, we are, like, I'm trying to follow you. I'm trying to implement what you are doing. Okay. So you can see now. So we have answered the question about where. We can also do question about um about um time, about when. You understand? So to do that when. I want to first of all teach us something in the calendar. We want to create an hierarchy. You know, we have created an hierarchy already. We already know that an hierarchy exists. 
But Power BI does not know our hierarchy. Are we together? We are the only one that knows our hierarchy. And it has a purpose, which I'm going to show us now. Under the calendar, can you see I have um, quarter? I have um, year. I have um, dates. So what I'm going to do is on my dates, I'm going to right click and click on create hierarchy. You are going to see what you are going to use to achieve. We will use it to achieve very soon. Or maybe I should show you what I want to achieve first. Let me share my screen. I want to show you what I want to achieve. Yeah, so that is, is going to be clear. Look at this line chart. Can you see that? Is another data different from what you are working on? No? But it's also Power BI. Can you see this line chart? We have a line chart, although the month is not yet sorted. We have what we call data hierarchy. So with this data hierarchy now, I can move from sales, you know, sales against months now. On the same chart, without creating a new chart, I can move to sales to quarter and sales to year to date. So on this thing, you, there is an arrow there. I just click on this guy. Can you see now that it has sales by quarter now? So when you want to go down within your data, if I click on it again, can you see now that it's showing me by year? Do you understand? So if I go up, if I click on up, can you see now it's quarter? I go down again, it shows me by month. I go down, I go up, I mean, it shows me by um, dates. Do you understand? It's the same data. So how do I achieve that? That on a single visual, we have three things in your x axis. Do you understand? Yes. Yeah, so let me just go back to what we are working on. So I create a date hierarchy. I just click on dates. I click on it. It shows me create hierarchy. And it's create a new feed called what? Data hierarchy. And when I come over here, over here, just hold on for me. Let me show you over here. Can you see dates over here and hierarchy? So it's telling you that select a column to add level. So I'm going to select other columns. So I'm going to select months, but you have to select it in order. Like in order of the hierarchy, you know, dates is the most granular one. Then you go to next level, which is month. Then we go to next level, which is what? Quarter. Then we go to next level, which is um, year. And, we, and that's okay. Are we guys together? So I have created my hierarchy now. What I need you to notice that all this hierarchy now is just one thing. If I come over here to my feed list, you will see now that I have date separate and I have another one called date hierarchy separate. If I expand, I'm going to see all the, okay, apply level changes. I didn't click on apply, let me see. I'm supposed to see all the, um, what's it called now? All the children that data hierarchy has. So it's supposed to be dates, months, quarter, and year. Can you see it now? Dates, months, quarter, and year. So when I come over to my report view, I only need to come to line charts. Oh, that's a mistake. For you to create a new chart, you first of all make sure you are not in, on a chart currently. So if you want to make sure you are not on a chart currently, you click on your canvas, your white space. After that, you now create a new chart. If you don't do that, it's going to override your previous chart. So I have this. I can just expand it a bit. And I'm now going to have my sales. Against what? If I decide to take note of something, guys, if I decide to just use month alone, 
Can you see what it is showing me? I won't be able to go up and down. You understand? You can see that those arrows that we have up there, it won't be here because there is no hierarchy currently. But I don't want month. What do I want to put there? Date hierarchy. I just click on it. You can see everything now is now under our axis. And I can now what? Can you see now? I have April. I can now drill down. Are we together? Are, we, are you understanding, guys? Do we understand, guys? Yes. So we can call these sales by months and we can leave it like this so that. So we want to have our we can still answer questions about where let's just do yeah someone asked the question that can we also do top five i think it was last class top five can you remember top five Five in power table. Yes, just like pivot table. So can we also do it in Power BI? Let me show you. So to show you that I am going to be using I'm going to be using um store. Is it store market? I'm going to be using market. We want to show top five markets and bottom five markets. So we are going to use our bar chart again. And we are going to put market and store against each other and sales. But you can see there are a lot of markets. You understand? Which may not make sense for us to show everything. So what we can do now is this. Can you see now that I have my feed pane? I can actually collapse this feed pane. I have visual visualization pane. And I have what we call what? Filter pane. So on that filter pane, can you see now that I have filters on this visual and I have markets, all. If, and I have sales, is all. I can do what? Can you see now if I click on this arrow, can you see basic filtering? Which means that sometimes maybe you just want to show Abia and Adamawa alone. If I check the box, can you see it's just showing me Abi and Anadamawa? Can you guys understand what I'm showing you? Yes, sir. But that's not what I'm interested in at the moment. If the assuming the story you want to present is about Abia and Adamawa, nothing more. Then that's what you are going to do. So in this case, I come to basic feature, I change it to top N. And under this show items, I change it to five. So top five what? I want to see top five sales. And I bring my sales over here to value. And I click on apply filter. Can you see now that it's showing me top five? I can now reduce the size. I can bring this guy a little bit over here. You can see I'm trying to align it. You can see a guideline. So I can change the name to this sales by market. I come to my format pane and I come to title and I change it to top five markets. 
and I can decide to bring it in. I can decide to bring it, I can change the heading to heading two so that it is a bit bigger. And I put it in the center. Okay. So this is top five market. But you know, we want to do bottom five also. So what I can do is to just control C, control V, my chart. Control C, control V. And I just edit it. So how do I do bottom five? It's very easy. Over here, just the same place you went to. I click on it again. You can see top end. And you have show items, top. I just changed it to bottom. Can you guys see it? Yes. I just changed it to top, to bot, from top to bottom. And I click on apply filter. I always remember to click on apply filter. And I come to my title. I change it from top to what? To bottom. Who is from Ocean State here? Yeah. Ocean State is the list. Who is from Ocean? Show your face. I think Silifa is from Ocean. I am proudly a do. <laughs> Your state is not even here at all. <laughs> okay. So we can, you can see now, but what I'm not saying, telling you about color, it is not good to use top five and bottom five, the same color for it. You need to quickly let people know that there is a difference between these two. So I'm going to change the color of bottom five to something that may signify negative like data colors, data colors, and I can change this color to what? Which color should we use? We should use red, sir. <laughs> you know, anybody that sees this already knows that, even without reading that, oh, there is a, they are not the same thing, no? They are, there is a difference. You understand what I'm saying now? So you just don't use colors. You use colors with a purpose. I'm trying to do something. There is still enough space over here. We can always create space. So you will see that we have more enough space than we think. I'm going to show us now. We just need to, because we are still going to put slicers, which we have not even talked about at all. What I also sometimes do is this. Let me show you. I just come over here. I come to my, I, I agree. I think I look at myself, okay, which, what is the length and width that I want to use? I come to under general. I just come to, can you see width and height? I can just say that, okay, I want the, all my charts to be 300, to have a width of 300. So that everything is going to be aligned. So I just come here. I, you can see this one is 296. I change it to 300. And I come over here again. I, I make sure there's a space between it and 300. You understand? You can do the same for height, but height is also very easy to compare because there, you have a guideline. So, 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 so what we need to do is this, where is it? We need to put another chart here and something here. So we are going to talk about um, line of business now. So what products, what line of business should we focus on? We can still use our bar charts again. 
and I can decide to have something like this. In case, let us see. Then we come to LOB. So is it possible to move your camera, your video camera towards the center? Image? Oh, it's disturbing. That's why I've been asking questions. I'm not even seeing. It's covering those visuals. Those um, seriously. Mm. I'm sorry. Maybe it's because I'm using the phone. I don't know. But... No, it's true that will move it by yourself. Just drag it; it will move. Okay. Okay. On, on your screen. Just Thank drag you. it to where you want it to be. Yes. I don't worry. It's true. Thank you. So uh, L O B. We have LOB and sales again. And uh, is it LOB? I think we should use a um, model. I think it has more items. I want to check something. Let's check model. Model. We can change model to axis. Yeah. Can you see now that our work is, hmm? so we just, we just, um, we still need to rearrange these four guys on top to align with, you can make it to be something like this. Put this guy on top of this one and put this guy on top of this one. You understand? Alignment is very important so that your work looks neat. Then it remains a um, model now, I mean, line of business. So we can use a, you can use a tree map. If you check this, um, this is it. We want to make a comparison. Is it comparison or? Yes. We know. We already know that we can't use all these white guys, but you can use a trim map. I can't even see it over here. They didn't put it, but there's trim map. Let me show you how trim, what trim maps look like. This trim map, trim map is over here, and you just put. Where is it? LOB and uh, sales. Uh, what's happening now? Okay. You can see what this one is telling you now. It's telling you that service, it occupies, like it shows the rectangle that shows how big it is. You understand? So we can see now that what it quickly tells us is that service is our big boy. All the others are very small. These guys are very small. And they are almost similar in sizes. But it doesn't give you information of the actual value until you put your mouse on it. You understand? So you really need to be knowing when you want to use it. Something you can use as alternative is you can use your bar chart also. You can use your column chart. Let us use column charts. So you can see now that we have trim map. And this one gives us a more, a more information. So you can see now what we talk about color alignment and things like that, contrast. So some people can decide to use another color. You know, we use gray as our background. If I come to my background over here and I change it to, you will see now why, why color is important. Let's just, just change it to white and see what we are going to have. It's not even very bad as I thought it would be. But let's assume somebody decides to use a color like this. Does this really, is this, does this really look good? So 
So does this really look good? No, we have better colors we can use. So I think this one too doesn't look too bad, but so there are options for us we can use. You just need to experiment and judge, be the judge. So I just want to go back to what I'm using. Me, I want to go back to what I was using. Please, uh, use black. Let me see how it looks. Please. You always remember you can adjust transparency. If you don't adjust transparency, you might not see the effects. Can you see how the chart comes out? Black. With black. Oh, it didn't, it didn't come out. This came out. Yeah. So you can, some, yeah, some people can decide to use black for all these things though, and just use black and white. Touch. And now use white as the text color. You understand what I mean? Mm. So it is all arrangement. So we want to quickly, we want to quickly do, um, where is it? We did not add slicer throughout our chat. We can add slicer. Where is it? Slicer, slicer, where are you? Okay, yeah, this is it. I have slicer over here. I click on slicer and I need to put my year, slight slicer. Where is year? Under the calendar. Make sure you are not picking here from your data hierarchy. You are picking it from the one that it's, it is um, different. So we are 2014 and 2015. You can adjust the size. So what's the difference from picking the year from hierarchy or from the calendar? And if you, you don't you pick it, you know the one for hierarchy, it has a purpose. The one for this one, you just want to slice by year alone. So you don't okay. need to pick it from uh, from uh, what's it called? Hierarchy. From the hierarchy. Hierarchy has a purpose. So your slicer, you have different types of uh, form. You can make it to appear. If I click on this dot, can you see now that your top right corner of your slicer, if you click on it, you have list and drop down. So we can change it to a drop down. So which when you change it to drop down, let me make it show very well. So drop down is over here. Can you see? I can just check 2014. So if I click on 2014, everything in this report changes. You understand? If I click on 2015, every other thing to changes. Like it slices it. I think you guys understand what we mean. We know what it, what, what we mean by slice already. So that is first thing I need to show you. Then once you are done. But the basic rule I always follow is that when I have just two or three items. I use a list, but if I have like five, six, seven, eight items that I want to allow my user to select from, you know, that is going to be taking too much space. In that case, what do you use? I use a drop down. Do you guys understand? So that is for year now, but I also want to see all these things by, by um, quarter. You understand? I want to slice by quarter. I have now have a question for you. Do I also have to slice this sales by month? You know, I have sales by month over here. Do you want to slice it or not? Would it make sense to be slicing it too? Remember, once you slice quarter, it is only going to show you the month that belongs to that quarter. Don't mind me. It's me that my, my mouse was dancing around and it's. I mistakenly pressed. Okay, let me just bring it back. So what I'm saying is this, I'm going to bring slicer. We make sure you 
come outside of the chat first, click on your canvas and you have Slicer. You can see I need some additional space, just very little. So you, that's why it's, it's more of a, um, So I put quarter, but the issue with quarter now is, I think, is it Q1 that we have? Yeah, Q1, let's just check Q1. Hello, Mr. Yeah. Mr. Jima. Yes, ma. Please, must you always have all the all the charts on is on the screen? Because I think it's getting too jam-packed somehow. No, it depends. I'm not, I'm not seeing it as too jam-packed at the moment, but it can be too jam-packed, like you said. Is because eventually what we are designing for is going to be on is going to be seen on a desktop. You are designing for a desktop or laptop view, not for phone view. Okay. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying now? You are not designing for laptop. Your work is going to eventually be published on a web, on a. You understand what I'm saying? On web, on a screen, not on a phone. We can mm -hmm. eventually, when we get to Power BI service, I can show you how to design. You can design a mobile view of this work. Mm -hmm. So that one you can scroll. But a basic rule of a dashboard is that everything must show in a, in a page. So you really need mm -hmm. to decide what is that thing that is important for me to show. There are a lot of things that we do not show currently now. We do not show any time intelligence reports. Everything about last month, last year, why, why, good. So, which is I can create another dashboard and call it Time Intelligence Dashboard. And now compare everything that is related to what? To, to what's it called? To, to, to time. You understand? But this one is just, we can't really call this six, five months a time intelligence. It's just normal trend. You understand? So you can collapse everything we have here and you can see that, that we actually have more space than you think. So it's, you, you are correct, it may be, but at this current time, it is not. You understand? Because what you are designing for is a, is a web page, is a, is a screen. Let me show you some things. 618, should I digress or not? No, I'm not digressing. So, I will eventually show us, you understand? Maybe I will send the link to us in group. So we have this guy now, Kota. So you, when I click on Q1, it filters everything that you have. So you took the Kota from the hierarchy? D did I? I, I do, I'm asking, I'm asking. No, I, I said we won't. OK. So there is. Is, is it that there's nothing in Q1? Or why is everything black? There must be something wrong somewhere. Let us check. Okay, Q1 2014, then they are coming up. Um, you can see now, but I don't want this quarter to, to touch this line chart at all. I want like my chart to be there. It should not be affected by the quarter slicer. Like you remember in pivot table, we did something like pivot table slicer connections. Can you remember guys? Yes, connection. yes, yes exactly what we want to do now. So we come to, we make sure I'm on my slicer. Then I come to, where is it located? There's just, um, I think it's located on the data manage relationships. Yes, manage relationships under modeling. Then I click on, is it manage relationships? Yes, not, no, 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 no. There's something, hold on for me, it's somewhere. It should be under data or but. Mm. 
something it should, it's something connection to. Let us just quickly. Please, uh, who is holding my computer? Who is holding my you computer? You can answer my question, that's why. Which question? <laughs> I said, what do you get this cut out for? <laughs> I say, I told you already now, we should, the rule of thumb is don't use, okay, edit interactions. Oh, it's under format. I don't know why Microsoft decided to hide it under format. So it's under format. Can you see edit interactions? So when you click on edit interactions, the moment you click on it, let me on, on, on click. Guys, I want you to observe the chat. I have not clicked on edit interaction now. The moment I click on it, something is going to happen. Look at it very well. Do you observe anything? Do we observe anything, guys? Ladies and gentlemen, yes. What did you observe? The circle line or something. Yes, exactly. So all these circle lines you can see now. There is interaction. If I don't want to have any interaction, can you see this guy for this line chart? I'm going to click on that circle, and it is going to create a space. You understand? As if you open the door. Can you see now that it's showing me all the months now? Which means that there is no interaction between this quarter, this quarter, um, quarter slicer and this line chart. And mm -hmm. I can un unclick my edit interaction and that's all. Do you understand? Do you understand what I mean by edit interactions now? And there are some couple of things you can decide to add in your inserts. You can decide to add the shape. The shape that's just some final workings. Like your chat should have a it should have a what's it called? an editing and a title, something like that, your dashboard. So you should give it a name. We can change this guy. We can always change this guy. Format pane, format shape. You can change the color. On that view, we can change it to, we can just put black. And we can now write something inside, text. And you write text inside. You can write, um, what should we write to? Let me pick two people's name to name our supermarkets. Who's, who should I pick now? Whose name should I pick now? Okay, let me just use work with Artworks Academy. So, work So you can see now, I can now increase my, the text size. So this, that is that about that. So that is just, we still have a lot of things we can cover about visuals, which I did not actually mention yet. So we are going to continue from there in our next class. But what I want to quickly show us before we conclude to this class is this. Guys, look up. 
let me create a new page entirely. So I can double click on my, on my screen. Can you see this visual, this page, this um, canvas? I can double click on it. And where are you? Mm. Oh, let me just come to Q&A. Double clicking does not want to work this afternoon. So let's come over here on that insert. Can you see Q&A? So I just come to Q&A. It's not so responding, why now? Is it because I did not answer your question, Thomas? <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> no? Do we have, we want, I want to show you Q&A, but it's not. Okay, let us pick it from our, okay. I picked it from my visualization pin now. It decided not to work over here. We have it in visualization pin. So it's preparing Q&A. So we can actually ask question about our data. These are some templates that are in Power BI, but you can ask more questions. E.g., which question? Show me like in, in natural language, in, in English. Can you see now this question? Show me sales for total for total for region for the last year. Once I click on it and I enter. So it's even showing. Let me just show for the last. I think a slicer is working on it. Let us um, show me sales total for region without any last year. So let us enter. Yeah, you can see now it's showing sales for region. This is the grand total as a what? As a for region now, it's showing you. We can also do show me sales total for percent region. And it's showing some things. We can also do, what is the sales? Show me sales for the last month, for the last week. We can generally ask questions. Show me model. Show me sales by model. Can you see now? It just tries to look at the best visual to represent whatever you ask for. Can you see it? Also it can also show it by um, as a table. Are we guys still together? We can change it from model to line of business. Are we guys together? Yes. So we can explore, um, what's it called? Um, um, what's it called again? Q and A, Q and A visual. And there is also another thing because our report at the, end, at the end of the day, we are developers, we are not users. Somebody is going to be using our, our reports, our work. So that's where person can decide to want to ask questions. Maybe he's not satisfied with some of the things he see. He wants to ask questions about the data. So what we can do again is, this is my, data, my model view. I can come to a region, under my D region, and under my D region, I can come to, to region. We can give it a, can you see we have something called synonyms? So we can, Put, actually put synonyms in region. You can put Yoruba, English, Aousa, anything. Can somebody tell me, maybe Igbo is, do you have anybody that speaks Igbo here? Yeah? Sandra, 
what's your local language? It's Igbo. Uh, can you tell us what maybe state means in Igbo? Let us use market. States, what does it mean in Igbo? In your in Igbo, what is the spelling? Obodo. Ah, can I spell it like this? Spell it for me. Oh, what? It just Obodo. O B O D O. Okay. O B O D O. So we have O B O D O in in as a synonym for for my for my for what for states, right? So we cannot go to yeah. our sales now. And also put a synonym for sales, which is like um, what can sales be now in Igbo? Like maybe money and um, like something like sales, like your revenue. What can it be? Tell us. Ego here. Ah. Ego. Spell it. Ego like. E G O. It's simple now. E G O. Mm -hmm. Then I think. A-H. Ah, don't let us use I think. A-H. Eh? Okay, A-H-I-A. I-A. So we have yes. those two scenarios. We just want, I just want to show example of what I mean to you guys. You can decide to do others yourself. So we have done for sales. And so that is in the background. Remember, your user will not eventually have access to your data model. So let me just confirm. So we cannot come to our report view. We can come to, I don't know how to say it, but let me just say, show me Obodo. Obodo by, what do you call it? Eguaya, what do you call it? Eguaya, you understand? So you can see what it shows us now. We can actually program it in the background that there are some synonyms. And once you just type it, you know. Ego are here, E-G-O. Yeah, you can see now that it is showing us states by what? Sales by market. Yes, by market. Because it has been programmed in the background. So you can actually put a lot of other things that you think people can use to ask questions. So that when they use it, your visual is going to be responsive. It is going to be smart enough to know what they mean. You know, you are the only one that understands your work. Other people can think of something else. So that's a lot already for today. Oh, it won't be funny at all. Okay. I thought I wasn't recording. <laughs> you know, I left, the, my connection stopped. Maybe it, it started itself. I can't remember. I, I, Google. So, I think that is enough for today. It is. It it is too much. Inf is it too much information? Anyway, we were just talking about visuals. There are still a lot of things I can still continue saying. So, uh, guys, before let me just say something, um, Thomas. Before weekend, I'm mm -hmm. going to I'm going to send a our projects. We are going to work on projects. So at this moment, try and review what you have done. You have this data already. You have measures already. You can create your dashboard. It's not compulsory. It's something like this. You can also, you understand? You can also come up with your own work, with your own story. That's number one. Number two is that you are going to have your data. That data may be dirty or not. You are going to solve it. You are going to create your own data model come up with something like this, we are going to publish it into Power BI service. So two things is going to happen before weekend. The first thing is I'm going to send a video link to us that is going to teach us how to have our own accounts with Power BI. Is that OK? Yes, sir. So you, you guys are going to make sure you have an account and you register. Because you can't publish to Power BI service without an account. Is that OK? Yes, yeah. So please quickly ask your question okay. because so my first question is are we paying for the creating of the account? Is it free? It's it's free. You are not paying, 
But 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 what okay. I did not tell us is that Power BI has up to theory of four subscription models. Let me quickly answer that question from very well. Hello? How are you? Hello? I can hear you, sir. I can hear you. Yeah. 